Hey there folks, Caleb Downey with SDI, and today we're gonna go over how barrel lengths affect velocity. Let's get into it. All right, so the arguments have been hashed out and rehashed out and reopened a thousand times on the internet as far as velocity, how, how long you need your 5.56, particularly 5.56, your ARs, how long you need them to be before they become a neutered 22. I'm not gonna try to answer that question for you guys, I'm really not. What I am gonna give you, as best as I can, is a little bit of data to let you make your own decisions, right? ARs are super fun to build, and you can build ones just for fun, just for the range. You can build one for home defense, for hunting. If, you're, if you could use it for work and stuff like that, you could use it for those things. There's a whole menagerie of different reasons you might build an AR-15 and what you want it to do. And with those reasons, you may need it to be more reliable. Like if you're using it for hunting, you need to squeeze as much energy out of that round as you possibly can versus I'm just punching holes in paper. I don't care. It may as well be a 22. So it's, it's all up to the end user on what exactly they need the gun to do. So again, I'm not trying to answer those questions. I am just trying to show you some numbers to let you see what a 20 inch, a 10.5, and a seven and a half inch 5.56 upper will do. All right, and so for today's purposes, just because this is what I have really, not because of any other reason, um, this is Tula ammo that I got. This is 55 grain. They don't even advertise what their velocities are on these things. And these things are not really known for their standardization as it were like this is not high grade ammo where every single round is going to have the same pressure the same you know velocity as the one next to it there's going to be some variances and stuff so every kind of ammo is going to be a little bit different so, some ammo is actually specifically made for the shorter guns and some is made for the longer guns it's it's a whole can of worms when you really start to open it up but this is what we're using today 55 grain stuff we've already got some rounds loaded up in here. We're gonna start with the long gun, the 20 incher. This is basically an M16A4, basically profile upper, so 20 inch full size. Uh, we do have a flash hider on the end. This will be an interesting after note to note after we're done. But a 20 inch gun, this is my Mark 18 Mod Zero upper. So this is a 10.3, so a significant drop, almost, yeah, almost half the size of the 20 inch, right? 20 divided by 2 is 10. Um, anyway, so this is our shorty little obnoxious guy. We've had this for a very long time. A bunch of different reasons. I've built it out and taken it down and rebuilt and stuff. But this is a 7.5 inch, right? Very, very short for 5.56. Five, you can get down to like 5 inches and stuff. I've seen those. Those are really short. And I don't have one of those. This is the shortest that I have. So without further ado, let's start with the 20 inch. Work our way down. All right, so here we go. We have our Caldwell chronograph set up. We're gonna make sure we fire every round from the same position. My screen isn't working, so I'm gonna have to read off the numbers to you, uh, but we'll do three shots and then we'll take an average of those three. Ready? Here we go. 30, 57. 31, 06. 31, 32. Now let's do our 10-5. All right, here's our 10-5. Here we go, three rounds. 26-63. Didn't count that. 27-02. 27, 27. All right, last and almost most definitely least is our seven and a half inch. Here we go. 23, 94. 23, Alrighty guys, so there you go. I'm gonna read off some numbers for you because our chronograph wasn't really reading onto my phone, so I didn't have a cool little picture for it to show you, but I'll read these things off. Basically, I'll give you the averages. The averages for our 20 inch upper was 3,098 feet per second. 
that's a good that's a good fast moving bullet that's really pretty pretty nice for for cheap 556 223 not even 556 stuff cheap 556 cheap 223 is what i'm trying to say so <clears throat> 3098 for our 105 or 103 i'm i'm averaging it it's a 103 but you could say 105 it's that's making clone people cringe their pants right now but anyway for the 103 <clears throat> it is the average was 26 97 so we had a drop of an overall 401 feet per second which averages to 40 feet per second per inch from a 20 inch down to a 10 3 so that's a good that's a good that's a good drop honestly that's a pretty good drop and then we dropped down to our seven and a half inch which the average was 2377 feet per second that's pretty that that's 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 a big drop from our 20 inch right so it, that dropped from our 10 3 to our seven and a half that was where did it go 320 feet per second overall and that averages to 107 feet per second per inch slower see how that that that's a that's a it's a it's a it's a drifting scale, however you want to say that. It's not the same thing all the way down from a 20 inch to a seven and a half inch. As you go shorter, the velocity just dive bombs, right? It's not, it's not, it's not a perfect graph. It, it's, it's a scale graph. I'm, I'm sure there's a math term for that, but it's interesting stuff to know. So our overall feet per second lost from our 20 inch to our seven and a half inch was 721 feet per second, which averaged 58 feet per second per inch you would lose going from a 20 to a seven and a half inch. So again, these are just numbers <clears throat> and this is numbers with these particular uppers, this particular system, no suppressor, this particular chrono, that particular ammo. You could get different variations of these numbers if you used different kinds of ammo, better ammo, hand-loaded stuff where it's a lot more um, controlled as it were. But still, you can definitely see you get optimized performance over 3,000 feet per second out of a 20 inch gun and you lose almost 725 feet per second going down to a seven and a half inch. Now, if you're punching holes in paper and trying to make a big boom, you go for it but keep that in mind depending on what you're trying to do with your builds. Anyway, this may have been a little bit more technical heavy than some of our other videos, and maybe I didn't hit it as well. Maybe I did. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, maybe we can do more things like this, but let us know, all right? Cable down with SDI. Take care.